Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us on this webinar, which will highlight a paper published last month in the Journal of Brachytherapy titled Surgically Targeted Radiation Therapy versus Stereotactic Radiation Therapy, a Dosimetric Comparison for Brain Metastases Resection Cavities. I'm honored to be joined by an esteemed guest who happens to be the senior author of this paper, Dr. Rangini Tolakanahali, a PhD and director of photon physics at Miami Cancer Institute. Dr. Tolakanahali, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dakota. I'm uh, excited to share with you all today a recent work on the dosimetric comparison of uh, START versus uh, SRT. Uh, before getting in, I would like to note that I don't have any relevant disclosures for this presentation. So as um, we know, each year, approximately about 200,000 new cases of brain mats are diagnosed. As we look at improving outcomes, our treatment paradigms have now shifted towards local therapies as a primary intervention for newly diagnosed cases. While this approach has shown potential, it also brings some challenges, especially in managing local failures post uh, stereotactic radio surgery. Uh, recent prospective clinical trials have shown that occurrence of local failures uh, following SRS can range between 27 to 33 percent of patients um, after one year of follow-up. And despite the existence of many consensus guidelines for treating newly diagnosed brain mets, we still lack specific guidelines to address these for managing recurrent disease. Um, consequently, the salvage treatment options for local failures uh, after an SRS uh, also vary widely among institutions. So one option, the salvage SRS, um, is uh, shows that about 60 to 85% of local control can be achieved for at least one year, and uh, about 25% may experience radiation necrosis. Surgical resection alone is another option, um, especially for those with very large or symptomatic recurrent brain maps, but the local control rate is a major concern for this particular treatment. Whole brain radiation therapy, as you all know, is another option, especially in the presence of a multifocal relapse in patients, uh, but high risk of neurocognitive impairment and lo low local control is a uh, concern as well. Another technique called the laser interstitial thermal therapy uh, has emerged. However, local controls have been suboptimal, especially without the additional radiation therapy. With brachytherapy, which uh, is a, uh, has, has been in, um, in our field and a community for a very long time, um, resection alone um, in brachytherapy allows for that pathological assessment where we can differentiate radiation necrosis from tumor progression at the time of uh, resection, as well as removing the causative process, which results in prompt symptomatic relief. Uh, secondly, it allows for the radiation therapy to be delivered near the area of the disease with a very rapid dose fall off, and it can limit the radiation exposure to the normal or the healthy brain tissue. Uh, thirdly, the delivery is immediate after a section. So the immediacy as compared to a traditional EBRT is a plus where the um, external beam radiation therapy typically is delayed by about three to four weeks after surgery and can be associated with an increased ri uh, risk of recurrence. Um, also, as the patient is treated right at the time of surgery, there's no concern that the patient may be lost to follow up. Uh, the, the immediacy of the radiation uh, being delivered with uh, brachytherapy uh, how does that come in as a, a clinical factor? Why is that uh, important as opposed to the typical, you know, th three to four week post-op initiation? So anytime delay after um, surgery, you do run into the risk of cell prol proliferation or tumor growth and delaying those three to four weeks, regardless of, uh, uh, of the time, uh, can actually contribute to the cell proliferation and the risk of uh, recurrence and a drop in local control, uh, as opposed to brachytherapy where you can start, uh, where 
the brake therapy seeds immediately start giving the radiation as soon as the resection is done and theoretically um, probably will help with the um, increased local control. Understood. So there's potentially a, a clinical benefit to targeting those remnant tumor cells uh, postoperatively as early as possible. Correct. Understood. Thank you. Uh, on the your fourth bullet here, um, no concern that the patient may be lost to follow-up. Is that something that occurs with conventional um, radiation courses? Actually, if you uh, look at literature, um, there's a wide uh, range of um, percentages of uh, patients lost to follow-up that have been reported. Uh, approximately about 20% of patients lost to um, follow-up uh, in many studies out there. And it, it could just be because of, uh, you know, patient compliance, uh, insurance issues with changes that may occur, transport issues. So a wide variety of uh, patient issues may occur um, where you could lose patients to follow up. Thank you. So brachytherapy, as we are discussing, as a safe alternative to radiation, but traditional brachytherapy um, using iodine-125 was uh, shown to have been associated with higher uh, necrosis rates up to about 22%. So brick therapy methods previously using these seeds uh, varied considerably across institutions. And the primary factor was the need to place these seeds directly onto the tissue. So those techniques um, showed that it was tricky to place. Um, it was unpredictable in terms of dosimetry. Um, uneven spacing, and mostly resulting in hotspots directly onto the brain tissue, which was a big concern. The, this also led to long OR times, increased staph exposure, and the potential that these th seeds could move after the placement, which ultimately limited adoption of brachytherapy in clinical practice. Uh, with uh, start or gametile, um, many of these challenges can be addressed. Um, this utilizes a titanium encapsulated cesium-131 seeds embedded into a reabsorbable collagen-based matrix. This matrix allows for very easy placement, spatial stability, uh, predictable dosimetry. It can potentially prevent seed migration and also provides that three millimeter offset between the radioactive seeds and the brain tissue. And thus, uh, it does eliminate direct seed contact, and so we would not have the hotspot directly on the brain tissue. The dose uh, with this, with a short half-life of 9.7 days, has more than about 95% of the dose delivered within six weeks. In terms of the workflow, um, our institutional workflow, and which is typically uh, followed, uh, once the patients have been identified um, especially if in the recurrent setting, uh, once we have questionable lesions, um, they do undergo a multidisciplinary review within the um, Institute uh, with advanced imaging, including MRI perfusion, spectroscopy. The pre-op MRI, uh, and once identified, the pre-op MRI is then used to target um, or delineate the target volume that we then use to estimate the the seeds, uh, which the physicist then places in order for the number of tiles required um, just before we assay. And at the time of operation, pathology is confirmed. If it is a viable tumor, then the physicist hands off the tiles to the operating nurse who then um, shields them till the neurosurgeon is ready to place them directly into the surgical cavity. It's all done within a matter of a few minutes once um, the surgical cavity is prepared for placement. And within 24 hours of resection, all patients over here undergo a CT and an MRI scan for post-implant uh, dosimetry analysis. And this one is done in um, MIM um, uh, software for uh, to help with both the pre-plan and the post-plan uh, dosimetric needs. So I want to present the analysis on uh, 10 uh, patients, 12 brain mets. We have uh, two manuscripts that were one um, initial clinical experience that we published last year and the dosimetric uh, comparison that I would like to speak about um, today. 
All patients uh, included underwent um, safe resection with pathological confirmation of viable disease. Um, they were planned to a dose such that uh, dose to 90% would receive 60 gray to a five millimeter depth from the surface of the resection cavity. Uh, here's an example of one of the post dosimetry, as you can see, in all three planes. So from August 2020 to June um, 2022, we had 12 resection cavities um, with GT implants. Uh, again, the prescription was 60 gray to the five millimeter uh, depth from the resection cavity of the operative bed. They were replanned with the external beam modalities, gamma knife, cyber knife, and intensity modulated proton therapy. Um, all of these uh, comparisons were aimed to evaluate differences in dosimetric coverage from between START and the EBRT as would be planned with the EBRT modalities. I'll go into a little more details in the next slide on how the contouring uh, was done. It's a busy slide, but uh, here's a quick comparison of uh, the EBRT modalities and gamma tile all in one screen. I don't wanna go into details of all of these, but um, uh, the for the external beam, they were all planned to 30 gray and five fractions with the BD to 10 gray of about 48 gray. Gamma tile, as I mentioned before, 60 gray to five millimeters um, of the operative bed. The CTV definition is different between the external beam radiation therapy treatments and the gamma tile. So um, for the external beam, the GTV is defined as the rim of enhancement at the outer edge of the resection cavity, which is quite different from how uh, the gamma tile is around the inner um, uh, uh, around the resection cavity and the five millimeter margin around that, which is defined as the CTV. Um, in this particular case, we did do this uh, uh, contouring of the GTV and the CTV is two millimeters around the GTV for external beam on the post-implant contrast enhanced T1 MRI, uh, which is slightly different from what it would have been uh, had we waited um, three to four weeks as uh, would be the case with traditional EBRT. In terms of optimization, um, all of these were planned such that 99.5% of the PTV received greater than 30 gray. For CyberKnife, we had multiple nodes, about 150 to 200 nodes. Uh, for the Gamma Knife, we had multiple shots, um, and we prioritized um, conformality for all of these. For the intensity modulated proton therapy, we used uh, three field, um, uh, single field um, optimization with 30% modulated for uh, organ at risk uh, sparing. And the post-implant dose calc was done with the MIM Symphony, uh, which uses the TG43 for um, dose calc uh, formalism. Here is, is a quick uh, uh, example of what the differences in the CTV looks like. As you can see on the left, the pink shows the uh, resection cavity and the five millimeter around that, which is defined as the CTV. On the right side, the rim enhancement, as um, I'd mentioned, uh, is the GTV for the SRT or the external beam modalities with the two millimeter expansion for the CTV. For a comparison, dose was uh, converted to biological equivalent dose. Um, on the left, you can see the conventional dose from gamma tile was converted to BED on a voxel by voxel basis using the MIM BED model. Um, the alpha beta was set to 10 for tumors, three for normal tissue, and the tumor doubling volume size was uh, chosen as 31 days. Depending on the histology of the metastatic lesion, this can vary from 29 days to the 60 days, 31 days being the most representative, um, with an alpha value of 0.12, um, and the uh, T half report repair time 0.5 days for um a tumor and 1.5 for normal tissue. On the right is the uh, LQ model that you can see um, typically used for any external B modalities for the BED dose calculation. Here's the slide showing the BED dose distribution. Uh, I'd like to take a moment before we go and start looking at this on the left side for the GT start. Um, it's important again to note that the CTV definitions are different. Over here, the blue shows the CTV for the uh, gamma tile. The orange is the one that shows the CTV for the external B modalities. And as you can see over here, the 60 gray 
is right around um, the gamma tile with about 45, um, ju just shy of the CTV over here. Um, as you can see over here, about the six degree line is within the PTV and 45 gray line mostly is covering the external beam um, uh, CTV and the PTV volumes. Here is another example just to show the dose spillage that you can see with the gamma tile versus the external beam modalities. Um, they are designed or they are optimized to be highly conformal. Um, and uh, the last one over here that you see is the IMPT uh, with the two beams uh, designed to come in these directions. So in terms of the BED dose calculation, we looked at the dose uh, or the BED 90 uh, received by 90% of the volume. Uh, to resection cavity and resection cavity uh, plus one millimeter all the way up to five millimeters. And that was compared across all of the modalities, the gamma tile and the external B modalities. As you can see, uh, this one is 90.1 gray and is significantly higher than those of the external B modalities. And as we come down to three millimeters, they become comparable and or greater than. And uh, below which, um, Gamma tile actually significantly has a sharp dose fall off at four and five millimeters. This is something that was surprising, but it has a sharp dose fall off. And at five millimeter, uh, both uh, cyber knife and IMPT were higher than gamma tile, and uh, gamma knife was statistically equivalent to um, the ga uh, gamma tile BD at uh, resection cavity plus five millimeter. In terms of the normal uh, dose tissue, which was defined as the whole brain, excluding the respective um, CTVs. So we know that V12 gray has, uh, is, is um, especially um, when the recurrent setting, there was a study, a multi-institutional study by uh, Kowalczuk with about 102 patients with about 120 plus recurrent brain meds. They reported that V12 gray was a good metric associated with symptomatic radiation necrosis for salvage SRS. And so when we actually look at that, uh, which is V24 gray as well, when it's given in the five gray fractionated scheme, uh, we can see that the um, uh, with the gamma tile, only about 1.1 cc's uh, with a range from zero to eight uh, receives this particular dose to normal uh, tissue whereas uh, it's significantly higher across the uh, external B modalities, with the lowest being gamma knife, which is about 6.2 cc's for these uh, V24 gray three. To tie it up with the study that we had initially uh, presented um, in brachytherapy last year um, for our initial clinical experience, uh, looking at these 10 uh, consecutive, consecutive patients with the 12 uh, brain mats, Seven lesions were previously treated with SRS. Uh, one lesion received two courses of SRS. Three were treated with whole brain, uh, two lesions with both whole brain and SRS. And two had previous uh, lit um, therapy. The median maximum tumor diameter or the size was about 2.7 uh, centimeters. And the um, median preoperative surface area, which is used to calculate the number of tiles, was about 15 c uh, centimeters square. The median time between the initial external beam radiation and the start was about 15.5 months. And the median BED, um, this is the cumulative dose, mind you, not just the, the one with the gamma tile, was about 132 gray and 116 gray. At the time of analysis, uh, seven out of 10 patients were still alive at a median follow-up of about 14.5 months. Uh, there were no local uh, failures detected. Local control was 100%. Um, there was surgery attributed complications, uh, uh, pseudomangiocele, and with a minor and another one with a minor headache. We did not see any grade three plus toxicities. We did have one case of uh, grade two radiation necrosis, but this was a patient um, that had received uh, two courses. We had received one course of EBRT and other surgical resection followed with another um, SRS and then um, came back again for with uh, after rec recurrence uh, to gamma tile. Um, 
So the result demonstrated that the Gantile approach or the G-START approach results in a significant higher mean BD to tumor cavities compared to the other external beams, especially at the surface. But for a resection cavity plus five millimeters, um, the value for GTA start is significantly lower than the comparable external beam methods. Additionally, the indicator V24 gray, which is a parameter associated um, with radiation necrosis, was significantly lower in the gamma tile plants. Uh, we should be mindful that we have a very small sample size. But despite that, the findings of the study demonstrate that G-START has a um, is a very promising treatment option for irradiating uh, post-recession cavities, and it can offer higher BD doses to the resection cavity while maintaining similar or much lower doses to the normal tissue. Um, while re-radiation can potentially prolong survival in patients with recurrent brain meds, its use has been limited due to the concerns um, with the conventionally considered uh, external beam radiation approaches. So um, considering brake therapy using the CGM-131 gamma tile design um, definitely is a promise as a safe alternative for re-radiation for recurrent brain meds. I would like to uh, thank the team uh, here from neurosurgeons, neuro-oncologists, uh, radiation oncologists, and medical physicists at MCI. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Tolokanahali. We have a, a couple questions for you, uh, if you don't mind. You mentioned a few slides ago, you know, steep dose fall off that you, uh, your team saw in the gamma tile um, treated lesions. Why is that dose fall off uh, important, both from a physics perspective and clinically? So high conformality is something that we always try to achieve. Um, and so especially when uh, this is the time when we are treating uh, multiple lesions, um, people are coming back in, and especially in the recurrent setting, having that sharp dose fall off will limit the dose that is the low dose bleed or the dose uh, uh, that is going into the normal tissue, which is uh, very important in order to reduce the risk of radiation necrosis. And especially uh, in the setting of uh, recurrent um, metastatic lesions where the, the region probably has already been treated to a higher dose previously. Understood. So there was more dose being delivered in the resection cavity, but as you expand outwardly from that resection cavity, particularly beyond three millimeters up to that five millimeter boundary. You Absolutely. A and lower uh, dose. one point that I would like to note over here is that with brachytherapy, you know, the hotspot is always of concern um, because you do get a very high hotspot, which then rapidly falls off. But the hottest spot over here actually is in the collagen or the tile itself. And uh, because we already have that three millimeter offset from the um, brain or the resection cavity wall, um, it, the hotspot does not fall onto the brain tissue, but in fact, it stays within the cavity. Thank you. Were you, was your, you or your team surprised by any of the findings in here? You, you mentioned that the study that your team published last year, which showed 100% uh, local control in these recurrent uh, METS lesions. And were you surprised by any of these dosimetric findings in this paper? Yes, uh, especially the, the, the fact that, you know, we expected that the um, uh, brachytherapy doses would probably be higher up to a five millimeter and then shows a, a sharp fall off. So the fact that we are seeing comparable uh, dosimetric um, uh, equivalent results as compared to gamma knife um, within the population that we have done and a significant fall off after three millimeters is something that we were not expecting to see. It, you know, speaking of uh, research, you know, as you think, look into your crystal ball and look into the future a little bit, you know, what are some areas of, of further research along this, these lines that you see your team doing or you think would be beneficial for other institutions to uh, engage in to further study the, not only the dosimetric differences of uh, gamma tile, but perhaps some of the clinical outcomes as well? Uh, you know, as we start um, seeing more and more of this being used, not only in the recurrent uh, brain mat space, but um, meningioma, the glioma, 
it would be important and it would be nice to see how um, the outcomes for all of those primary uh, treatments look like and um, not just in the recurrent setting, especially um, uh, to see if this can be used in combination with some external B modalities. Um, additionally, one other thing that uh, I would like to point out is that with the radiobiological differences between different uh, histologies of uh, brain mets and or the other diseases, uh, we should be mindful and, and we it's important to see how that plays into this, um, especially with the tumor doubling time which can vary very differently with glioma being very aggressive and some other uh, being very slow. So the same dose might not be, um, one size fit, fits all might not be the answer. And, and there might be some avenues for us to start looking at a, um, a different dosimetric uh, instead of going with 60 degree to five millimeters for all cases. Absolutely. Uh, I respect that stance quite a bit. You know, certainly, you know, there's there's not a one size uh, fits all option, and I really appreciate uh, you know the very patient centric approach uh, you and your team take uh, when dealing with this you know very unfortunate poor prognosis uh, disease. Dr. Tolkien and Holly, I want to thank you for your time. This has been a great uh, discussion, and I look forward to many more. Thank you so much, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh -huh.